All right, team. Let's go ahead and dig into these notes. There's some exciting stuff for Warriors that we'll get to near the end of it. But we have to get through a little bit of, like, fried stuff before we do that. I've been very much looking forward to, like, seeing some, like, changes that would be more sort of, like, in the near future. But these are changes that they're thinking about for 10.0.5, which is the future of, of Dragonflight, but... I mean, 10.0.5, even if it's only a couple weeks away, that's still a long time to wait. We've already been sort of just getting pounded by the same, uh, like, way OP meta classes for a long time. And... I mean, I don't care if people are getting dunked on in a battleground by a warrior. Warriors are just not there. And if, and it's, it's, it's rough. It's rough. So... I'm gonna keep playing my warrior because I love it, but... It is really tough to kind of be in the gutter and be, have to feel that every day it's tough but anyway let's talk about the 10.0.5 sort of upcoming changes starting off with every other class except warrior then we'll end off with warrior um but i guess just as a preview to my warrior homies that's something to look forward to it does look like ignore pain is on the talent tree right now you have to choose between that and storm wall which is your healing off of parries which is whack because we don't need to be, have any defensive taken away. We just need it to be added to our kit, but we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of down in the dumps about it, about Warrior recently, but we'll, we'll try to take a look at this and see how it goes. So starting off with Demon Hunter, it, they are nerfing the PVP multiplier on Demon Hunter's soul rending, which is just like their leech, right? They get normal leech and then they get extra leech when meta is up. That's getting nerfed from a PvP modifier of 1 to 0.6, so their leech is going to be nearly half as effective as it was before. And Soul Rend is getting um, a nerf from PvP modifier of 1 to PvP modifier of 0.83, so that's getting nearly a 20% nerf on Soul Rend as well. So Soul Rend deals absurd damage for no reason, and leech is a pretty big. Uh, defensive layer for demon hunters so they're tuning that damage down a little bit and tuning their leech down a little bit um glimpse is making it so that they uh instead of taking reduced damage by 75 percent it's only 35 percent until you land you still get the full immunity loss of control so you can like you know backflip and dash and then you're immune to cc that entire time so that makes me think that arms or that warrior should have a uh, immunity to cc when you charge. It should also remove disarms like uh, theirs does. That'd be good. And you take less damage while charging. 35% is fine. That'll do. That's fine. We just keep it in line with Demon Hunters. Just keep it fair. Uh, Vengeance, who cares? Um, but before you get too excited about them nerfing Demon Hunter, be like, hey, hooray, they nerfed Soul Rend, and they're not leeching for as much as they were before. Uh, they decided to give the Hunt uh, an additional 60% increase from going from 184.44% of their attack power to a 245% of their attack power. So, for some reason, even though the hunt literally one-shots people, they decided to nerf it. Um, the encouraging thing about this is they just recently nerfed the hunt, and now they're sort of reverting that nerf, which makes me think, great, all these bullshit, completely unnecessary nerfing a B-tier class Fury nerfs that they did before the season even started, maybe they'll come to their senses and nerf that, or uh, revert the nerf on that, right? That would be good. That would be good. So if they're reverting if they're reverting nerfs, then maybe they'll revert the Fury nerfs too, right? So maybe Fury could not have a Mortal Strike that just falls off after taking, you know, an entire 10, 10 seconds to stack it, and then it just falls off. That would be That would be a nerf that they could probably consider reverting. Um, so, something to think about, right? That would be good. You guys can find the updates right there. There you go. So, yeah, so they're buffing the hunt for some reason. Okay. Whatever. Um, Boomkin stuff, they're, they're getting this changed. I don't know about Boomkin stuff, man. But anyway, Astral Communion uh, increases maximum Astral Power by 20 and teaches them this ability, which is a 60 Astral Power generator on a 60 second cooldown, which is cool. 
This one's also pretty neat. So Feral Druids, you guys know Feral Druids who do a consistent 60k DPS in Arena? Yeah, they're nerfing all of their abilities by 3%, so that's kind of interesting. Neat. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep. So now they'll do, uh, you know, a little bit more damage because they, uh, you know, we're only currently doing 60k DPS the entire game. Have you ever seen a, have you ever seen a Feral Druid in, on details in Arena? Yeah. They, uh, there's everybody else is like right here, and then there's Feral Druid that's doubling everybody else's damage, so they're buffing them by 3%. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. So that's happening. That's cool. Uh, they're moving some of their talents around, which is, I don't know what that really means. Uh, Ferocious Bite is also getting its, du its damage, uh, increase doubled. It was going from 2% to 4% increased damage for each of your bleeds on a target. And then rank 2 Ferocious Bite goes from 4 to 8% increased damage for each of the bleeds on the target. So that just gets doubled. That's cool. That's what they needed. For sure. A warrior is W, which is like the last. So just hang in there. Guardian Druid. Uh, who, who cares? They should be deleted from the game anyway. Um, I don't know. what they, It's going from a 3 to a 200. So I don't know what that's about. I mean, like... I guess that's like healing more when you spend rage, something like that. I don't know. They should be deleted from the game. Um, casting regrowth makes you run a little faster now for a certain amount of time. So it's now it's six seconds or something. Okay. They nerf fury. Uh, not this round, but they they did before the season even started. They're like, wow, Bajira sure is crushing people in random battlegrounds. We better nerf that class. So. Yeah, I mean, Fury had, like, the best Mortal Strike in the game, and now it's the worst, and it's just, it, that's all, all Fury did was heal itself a little bit, be fairly tanky, and apply a big, reliable Mortal Strike, and now it doesn't, it, it, they, they nerfed the healing, they nerfed the damage reduction, and they nerfed the Mortal Strike, so Fury is literally just, like, an auto-attack bot. Like, that's just what you do. It's just a PvE class now. That's all there really is to it. So, Devastation Evoker, they must not have been watching Trill Stream very much, because they decided to buff all their damage a ton. So, yep. I don't know what all this means. This stuff right here? I don't know. Just deal, I don't know. It deals more damage or something like that? I don't know. But this stuff, so Eternity Surge, it was dealing 340%. Now it's going to 374%. Uh, Eternity Surge Critical Strikes now generate two Essence, where it was one Essence before. Um, Firestorm, whatever that is, got buffed from 27 to 33% of spell power. Uh, casting and Empower increases the damage of your next two spells of the same color by 20% instead of 15% now. Deep Breath damage got increased by 5%. Uh, deep Breath rank uh, 2 damage got increased by 10%. Um, deep Breath also applies some sort of... They just, they're just buffing that by 5%. I, just, I think this is the same thing. It's... It's... Uh, um, it's... Like PTR data mining, so the numbers are kind of weird sometimes. This is for 10.0.5. Try playing a ret, then you can cry. Warrior pretty much is ret. Just does a lot of damage and dies. Pretty much the same thing. Um, but yeah, your damaging critical strikes now deal an additional 10% extra crit damage. Right? So it was 220, now it's 230. So they just gave uh, Devastation Evokers a ton of extra damage. It's pretty wild. Um... Preservation, it looks like like their Dream Flight minimum range got buffed. So they can they can be a little closer now. Flame Strike got buffed. Living Bomb got buffed. Frost, Glacial Spike, which is already hitting for like 260k, got buffed. They needed that. It's not it's not completely one-shotting people yet from full health, so they had to buff it up a little bit. Ray of Frost also got buffed a little bit. And Frostbolt got buffed a little bit. So they buffed Glacial. Yeah, I have no idea. No idea what's going on here. I'm not even to the, the most egregious of all. Um, Mr. Monk, uh, they are getting like a plus 5% healing on all their healing. It's just, a stuff, it's just a buff to their stuff. They're getting a buff to their damage on these guys too. So they're like, Mr. Monks are just getting buffed. They got 5% damage on all their abilities. They got, like, 11% damage on this stuff, which is also healing, right? Uh, this, this is, uh... This is 15 to 10, so I don't know what's up with that. Maybe, maybe that got nerfed. Maybe Blackout Kick got nerfed, something like that. But it's green, which makes me think it's a buff. Who knows? Uh, anyway. <clears throat> all this stuff got buffed. 
this thing got nerfed? Maybe. I don't know what's going on with that one. Maybe Spinning Crank it got nerfed by 4% or something like that. But anyway, all these got buffed too. I'm not sure who this is all for. This is all for Mistweaver? Yeah. All for Mistweaver. And Josh, thanks for the Prime Amp. It's state of mind. It's PTR. It might not It might not stay that way. But this is just letting you know like what they're thinking. So, Feyline thing got buffed. There's that too. And Kelsey, thanks for the 12 months, man. Big flex for you as well. I'm enjoying Dragonflight a lot too, but it's... Uh, it, it's, it needs some adjustment. And uh, I, some of the adjustments that I'm seeing right now are kind of mind-boggling. I think Mistweaver is not in the top three heals, though, so buffing them up a little bit makes sense to kind of bring them up if that's what they want to do. Anyway, this stuff all got... Basically, Mistweaver just got... Everything got buffed. <laughs> all, the, all their stuff got buffed. So, this thing... Fatal Flying Guillotine? Touch of Death... Strikes up to four additional nearby targets. I've never seen that before. But it's always an improved touch of death. I'm not sure what improved touch of death is, but I mean, that's that sounds kind of scary. Just kill everybody around you. Kind of wild. For PvE, yeah. I think a lot of this stuff is for PvE. It's just It just doesn't really make sense. For some of it. So, Pallies are getting buffed a little bit. I'm not seeing, like, mana changes for Paladins in this, this data mining, but I guess Tears Deliverance is getting buffed. And something about Word of Glory is getting changed. Okay. After you spend 20 Holy Power, your next Word of Glory echoes on a nearby ally at 30% effectiveness. Okay. So here, here's the stuff. Here, we can scroll down to Priest. Here's the stuff that I really, really do not understand at all. This is like right up there with like the hunt getting buffed. I don't understand this at all. So, Holy Priest is getting their healing buffed a little bit, which the Holy Priest and Disc Priest are pretty bad, so... They're buffing up Holy Priest damage. Guys, they're buffing Shadow Priest damage. For the second time, since the beginning of Shadowlands, Shadow Priest has been the most broken PvP class in the game. And this is the, not first time, the second time they have buffed their damage. What is going on? I understand they're not good in PvE. What is going on? What are they doing? What is happening here? Like... Do we just not care? Like, we, this, we have to address this. I don't know, man. We have to address this. Hey, you had a game the other day with the S Priest who didn't do any damage. We have you had one game where the priest didn't do much damage. I don't even know what you're talking about. First of all, second of all, we probably still lost the game. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, Shadow Priest, there. I don't know if they even use Mind Flave. That's getting buffed a ton. Uh, it's just it's just effect aura modifies damage healing done. It's going from 32% to 52% with Mind Blast. A 20% damage buff to Mind Blast? Devouring Plague is getting another 11% of their spell power buff. Mind Flay Insanity, I don't know if people even use that in PvP, is getting 20 is going from 250 to 285%. Mind Spike is getting another 8% of their spell power damage buff. I don't know, man. So for Psychic Link, they're they're adding like Mind Spike, Mind Games, Void Bolt, and Void Torrent to be benefited by that. Void Torrent is going from 420% of your spell power to 483%. So they're adding Mind Flay to the an ability that reduces the cooldown of Mind Games. Power Word, Solace, and Mind Blast. This this is this is for everybody. Reduce the cooldown of mind games. And then this this changes the way a vampiric touch works, I believe. Just giving you leech, I think. Instead of only the healing off of VT. Like they're 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 buffing Shadow Priest damage. Making cast OP again, but they've been OP the entire time. This has been the most OP class in PvP the entire time. It it doesn't it does not say just PvE. The last buffs that came in for Shadow Priest damage were not just PvE. 
I understand that Shadow Priests aren't doing great in PvE, but these, these buffs aren't just PvE buffs. These affect PvP. It's insane. Rogues are getting buffed too. <laughs> a little, like, in certain ways. The Garot's getting nerfed, but they're actually getting buffed overall. Garot gets nerfed. But they, they made it so that you have a new ability, Arterial Precision, where Shiv strikes additional four nearby enemies. So AoE Mortal Strike, AoE Sharpen Blade, by the way, and a Colossus Smash, and increases your bleed damage done to the affected targets by 20%. So they gave Rogue Warbreaker AoE Sharpen. Oh my god. Like, what the fuck? Like, why even have Warrior be in the game when when you have an Assassination Rogue that has Warbreaker that applies AoE Sharpen Blade on people? Like, what's the point? It, it slows by 70... It, it's, it's Piercing Howl, Warbreaker, and AoE Sharpen Blade all in one ability on a shorter cooldown. Like, what are we doing here? I mean, potentially it's like, okay, yeah, Badge Queequee's back, but like... So where's have stealth now? <laughs> Let's not stop there. Let Okay, we, we have established how ridiculous that ability is, right? So Garok got nerfed in PvP, which is good. They're, I mean, it's, it's like doubling every other source of their damage, which is already insane. Uh, but yeah, look at Sepsis. So, and speaking of stealth, you don't actually even have to be in stealth, by the way. Because if you use Sepsis, as soon as you do so, you gain uh, one use of any stealth ability, probably Garot. If the target survives its full duration, they suffer an additional 150% of your attack power and damage, and you gain an additional use of any stealth ability for 10 seconds. So you have two more Garots that you can use whenever you press Sepsis and somebody doesn't die from it. Right? They didn't do a damn thing for Rep Paladins. They didn't say anything about Rep Paladin. Do you see that? Her pal is just like, well, it is what it is. And then Outlaw got all this other stuff, too. Right? Outlaw got some stuff. Killing Spree also gives you a 65% damage reduction. So that's kind of cool. It looks, like it looks like this got nerfed a little bit, though. I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. A an AoE... An AoE Piercing Howl Warbreaker Sharpen Blade. On what's what's Shiv's cooldown? Twenty five second cooldown. Like what is going on? Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, by the way, Invigorating Shadow Dust Vanish reduces the remaining cooldown of all Rogue abilities by fifteen seconds. At rank 2, it reduces it by 30 seconds. So you can kidney one guy, vanish, and then kidney the other guy. Or just kidney the one guy, vanish, and kidney again. Which is just like... Okie dokie. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So PP multiplier looks like something got reduced here. Their, their damage, something got reduced. Or something. Something got buffed and something got reduced. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I'm not sure how that works. Oh, two charges, too. Yeah, let's not forget that. Two charges, right? Yeah. So, elusiveness has been changed. Uh... <laughs> oh, they just gave him faint just, just straight as an ability now, not even a talent. So they just have faint. I mean, whatever. It's like... Oh, they just so yeah so faint is just baseline now. Let's see. Okay, so Shiv. Did Shiv take away nature damage done against target is is increased? So did they did they remove that for the other thing? So but nature damage doesn't really do. It, it's always the um, always bleed damage is their top damage anyway. So that's actually like a buff probably. Who knows? Where are you reading this? Uh, right here. Here you go. Time level rogue, yeah, I guess so. Oh, unbreakable stride, sick. Reduces the duration of movement slowing effects 
by 30%. That's, uh, that's sick. Because rogues already aren't uh, fast enough. Cool. Yeah, if, yeah. Assassination is a direct fury counter. It's it's just like a S plus class, just beating up on a countering of B tier class. It's already nerfed into the dirt. Like, what's the what's what's the point? All right. Anyway, so that's rogue. Got stronger. So let's look. Demon hunter. In, uh, Demon hunter did get nerfed in some ways for sure, but it got its hunt buffed. So it's like okay. Shadow Priest just straight up got buffed. There's no discussion of like any kind of defensive reduction whatsoever on Shadow Priests. Yeah. Yeah, so it's slow disc town as well, yeah. So shamans have uh Wind Fury Totem. It, it, is that new? I don't know. Or is it just when they when they auto attack and generally have a chance to swing another time? Not then they have May Hand? Okay, interesting. So, Mana Spring Totem, I'm not really sure how that works. Your Lava Burst and Riptide cast restore mana? But it, it still has to be a totem, right? Anyway, so like your abilities restore mana or something with that totem. Okay, so Mana Spring, okay, it's just an ability now. So you don't have to actually put a totem down, it's just, a, it's just an ability. Just do it. Just doing your stuff gives you back mana. Okay. All right. So guys, I, I know I know that we have we have really looked at some stuff. We've 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 really looked at some stuff so far, right? We, we once more have to go into the fray. Okay. Shadow Bolt for Affliction Warlock has been buffed by ten percent. Corruption. Wait, no. New effect. Corruption has been buffed by 5%. More Shadow Bolt. The same thing. Yeah, so I think that's all. So Shadow Bolt has been buffed by 10%. Corruption has been buffed by 5%. Agony has been buffed. Drain Soul has been buffed. So basically just Affliction Warlocks that are already unstoppable in doing, you know... 35k plus DPS are just going to be doing more damage. Uh, refreshing, Corruption, Agony, Unstable, Affliction, and Siphon Life with less than 5 seconds remaining will make them... will deal 20... now it's 24% spell power. Okay. So Pandemic, Invocation got buffed. Seed of Corruption got buffed. So just basically just buffs across the board for Affliction Locks. Gotcha. Uh, you, you, you don't mind Affliction buffs? I mean, demo, less Demo Locks? I doubt it. Nothing has changed at all for Demo Lock, I don't think. We can keep scrolling, but Immolate got buffed. Incinerate got buffed for Destro. Let's see. Avatar of Destruction got buffed. Channel Demon Fire got buffed. Conflag got buffed. Reign of Fire got buffed. Soul Fire got buffed. A lot. And Infernal got buffed. Okay, so no no changes whatsoever to demo locks. No defensive reductions at all. No damage reductions at all. Nothing happened for demo lock. Remains Giga S plus tier. And now we have warrior. So the reason why we didn't look at warrior first is because we needed to understand. And where the fuck are the DK nerves? Where are the DK nerves? They should have been top of the top of the board. Nothing for DKs. DKs are fine. Is what they said about DKs for right now. DKs absolutely fine, perfectly balanced. We want them to run everybody over and be unkillable. That's our that's our intended design. We want them to have two grips, a range silence, a range stun, a pet stun, two kicks. They have their kick, they have pet kick. They have an AoE blind. They have AMZ, AMS, Rune Warding, they have the Necropolis thing, they have Death Strike, they heal off of their Mortal Strike. We want that. That's good. They're immune to stuns, they're immune to fear, like, that's good. That's what we want. They can't be slowed. They have a they have a 70% slow. That's the design that we're looking for. That's solid. Cool. Nice. Let's see how Warrior turned out. That's what they wanted. Great. Perfect. Immune to all roots, walks out of spear. Yep. Great. 
That's where, that's that is where we want the class to be. All right, good to know. So for warrior, ignore pain may be back on the menu. It's a talent now. It doesn't say this. It's a talent now. You have to choose between Stormwall and Ignore Pain. Do you guys know what Stormwall does? It's it's where it's where you can uh, heal for 10% every time somebody hits into your parry on a one second cooldown. So we're obviously going to be choosing Ignore Pain, but why do we have to drop like a talent that's like so bad? Like it like just let that exist and just give us Ignore Pain. Like, why are you still making us choose between one of our shitty useless defensives and Ignore Pain? Like... Just just add Ignore Pain to our kit, we're already useless. Stormwall does nothing, but it's still better than nothing, actually. Like, at least you can, like, turn into the army of DK pets chasing you and get some parries off of it. At least you can turn into the literal demonic legion from the, like, literally the demon horde that killed King Varian Rin. Like, you turn into that. And you actually get, like, a, maybe a little bit of heals off of that, right? Like, you expect us to fight the thing that killed Varian Rin on, like, a two-minute cooldown? Like, at least you can parry that. Or at least the BM Hunter, who's, like, the Demo Lock is 80 yards away. Just, just whispering in the corner, summoning demons on you. The BM Hunter is 80 yards away. Just in feign death while his pets are killing you. At least you can turn into that and parry and, like, get some healing on a, on a minute 30 cooldown, right? But no, you have to choose between that or Ignore Pain. It's like, I mean, we're probably choosing Ignore Pain, but why is there any reason for a warrior to have to lose anything in exchange for something we needed just in general? Makes no sense. Makes no sense at all, but at least we got that. Um, for all of you Fury players out there, uh, Anger Management affects Ravager now, which is a no-brainer. That makes sense. Um, Avatar doesn't buff these abilities anymore. It doesn't buff Thunderclap or Shockwave. So that's a prot nerf, I guess. Uh, Battle Lord makes Overpowered deal more damage. Uh, which is cool, I guess. We really don't need more damage. It's, we don't. That's not what we need for PvP. It's just not. James, thanks for locking the sub, man. Big flex for you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, dude. Just playing ARMS right now and getting tunneled in every round? Of course you are. Yeah. Of course. Damage reduction Avatar? Uh, no. You do... No. That's not how that works. The, I think a movable object. This is prot. Yeah. That's prot. That, it's gotta be, right? A movable object? Whatever that is. That... If you take the 10%... If you're taking 10% reduced damage on Avatar, is that new? That'd be kinda cool. An offensive and defensive cooldown? Popping Avatar gives you the same amount of defensive reduction as uh, D-Stance, by the way. Incredible. Incredible. It's on Wowhead. Okay, so I mean, I, I I will not turn down damage buffs. I'm not gonna not gonna turn that down. Improved Slam is now a 15% increased critical strike chance per talent point rather than 10%. So improved sweeping strikes. I don't. Did we even have this before? Am I am am I am I paying attention? Like where even was improved sweeping strikes? Do I use this currently? That goes in its place, yeah, so... Now Sweeping Strikes can last six seconds longer. Right, I, Sweeping Strikes is, is supposed to be based on, so I'm not sure what's going what's going on here. This is just new, so it was maybe already in testing, and now... Okay, it, it was just... It was already in PTR, and then they just... Okay, they're just buffing the talent, okay. So Sweeping Strikes last six seconds rather than five seconds, which is cool. Or you can do Focus Strikes, where... I guess this is what you have to choose between, right? Where uh, Mortal Strike hits for full damage or something like that instead of a half damage or whatever okay I'll probably just take longer sweeping strikes maybe I'm not sure actually okay so improved or power uh, now also generates rage which is kind of cool generates 90% of attack power divided by 10 rage is that, is that what I'm understanding here? So, Overpower will actually generate a small amount of rage. Man, that's nice. It says underneath the Avatar notes that there was 10% damage reduction. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Do I have to scroll down for that? Because I saw this thing right here. Immovable object. Take 10% less damage. Well, no, sorry. Yeah. Transformed into a Colossus for 20 seconds. Yeah. So, whatever that is. 
Can you ignore pain back? Yeah, that's nice. But you have to choose between that or Stormwall, which then Stormwall is not that good, so it's kind of a no-brainer. But like Fury, like Warrior in general, should not have to choose between anything. You should just be adding stuff to our kit. Okay, you don't need to be like, oh well, maybe it's this or that. At this one, it's a tough choice. Like, no, dude. We're literally paper. You don't need to be making us have to make any choices right now. But yes, ignore pain is still good. So, all right. Um, so I don't, I don't know what you're talking about with Battle Lord affecting Dreadnought. Oh wait, but yeah, an overpower affects Dreadnought because that's just overpower. But yeah, that's nice. That's good. So this is pretty cool. We've we've seen this before. So Spiteful Serenity is a talent where Colossus Smash and Avatar's durations are increased by 100%, but their damage bonus was reduced by 50%. Now it's only 40%, so that's that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, so that makes it even a, a more attractive option. So you're going to have a, a very long duration Avatar and C-Smash. It's just going to be uh, not quite as much increased damage, but it'll still be nice. So that's, that's cool. That's cool. But once again, I mean, like, we don't really need more ways of dealing damage. Arms, the one thing that arms actually does is damage, so that's cool. Um, anyway. So, Storm of Swords, it makes, uh, Whirlwind cost a little bit less rage than before. To deal the extra damage. So, Strength of Arms, is this just, uh, like, where is this? Is this just part of the build? Where overpowers a 10% increased strike chance, increased critical strike chance. Deals 10% increased critical strike damage on, on enemies below 35% health. Overpower generates 8 rage. I mean, that's nice. That That is very nice, yeah. That's cool. But once again, it's it's like... Giving us more creative ways to deal damage is like... I'm not going to turn that down. It's just that's not where the weakness lies, right? This is PvE stuff, probably. It's got to be. Um. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's cool for ARMS, though. I mean, ARMS, arms is... Arms is Definitely looking improved. Ignore pain alone is a big deal. But it's a PvE thing. Still like the extra crit damage and, and crit chance, though. That's sick. And generating rage is cool, too, because we're actually going to use rage on ignore pain now. Which looks to be like an 11 second cooldown. Maybe it's affected by haste. You already like arms more than fury? I've been saying this for a while, is I do think even if fury is, like, more durable right now than arms, I think that arms is clearly the way of the future, right? They're just, they're just leaving Fury to PvE, basically. So... Berserker's Torment, it, the the effect of Wreck and, or Avatar, whatever the secondary effect, is going to last a little longer, I guess. Instead of 6 seconds, it's 8 seconds, if I'm reading that right, which you don't... you don't. I mean, I, I guess that's nice, right? But you don't even really use that one. You use the Odin's Fury one, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, single minded Fury buffs, Pog... Increased auto attack damage with your dinky little one-handed butter knife. Uh, you do more damage with your auto attacks, so there's that. Onslaught is going to hit harder and um, gives you a little enrage and some rage. But if you look uh, further down, I think they're increasing the the amount. Wait, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out. There is an increased amount of uh, enrage overall timer, so. Anyway, so Ravager's damage is only decreased by 30% when you get two charges of it, and it, and it gives you more rage, so that's kind of cool for that particular option. Storm of Swords, I mean, Whirlwind is getting a little bit buffed with Storm of Swords, so that's good for Annihilator. So here's Tenderize. Okay, it only is going to buff you with Slaughtering Strikes if you have Slaughtering Strikes? Okay. But Enrage does last two whole seconds longer. That's cool. And Unbridled Ferocity is Rampage and Onslaught. So they're really leaning into this Onslaught build right now. Have a chance to grant you Wreck. Okay, and Prot. Is this... Is this yeah, so I, th I think Pr I think Prot... Is, is that the only one that gets the Immovable Object thing? Where you take 10% less reduced damage? Because th this was in arms for a second, but I don't know if that's accurate. Because now it's showing it as like a special thing for Prot only, right? Okay, so movement speed is increased. They're just changing like a tooltip or something. Um, an inspiring presence is... Doing what? So 
it's five seconds, something like that? I don't know. Maybe, it changed, maybe it's just tooltip change anyway. That's that's what we're looking at for, for the changes. No, no DK nerfs at all. Assassination Rogue buffs. Warlock buffs. Shadow Priest buffs. Enhancement Shaman, nothing. Rep Paladin, nothing. Feral Druid, buffs. Windwalker Monks, not. I didn't see much there too. DH got a baby nerfs, but DH got buffed. Yeah, they got they got their they got glimpse is gonna they're gonna take a little more damage during glimpse. They still can't be CC'd the whole time, and their leech is gonna be a little bit less than before. What happened to DH? The hunt got buffed. They're they're not gonna be leeching as much as they were before. They're gonna be leeching for 0.6 of what they used to be leeching before. Solren dot nerfed, yeah. Solren dot nerfed, leech nerfed, glimpse nerfed, the hunt buff. I don't know, man. I don't know, bro. Almost half their healing, yeah. Hopefully that makes a difference. Pharaoh did get buffed, yeah. With Master of the Ability for Arms, yeah, I saw, yeah. Is is it for everybody? Because, once again, that, I feel like that's kind of like a data mining weirdness. If Arms gets to take less damage during Avatar, that's cool. It is cool, but I don't know. What Assassination got? <laughs> assassination got an AoE, Piercing Howl, Mortal Strike, Warbreaker. All rolled into one ability. Shiv. So you, you can take you can take Shiv, which Piercing Howl, Warbreaker, uh, Sharpen Blade, your your enemies. I don't see anything for Hunters. Yeah, with a double duration, long time, 10% reduced damage. Tank. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. With with two charges on a shorter CD. Yep, exactly. So, at like every S tier class got buffed. <laughs> like. I don't know. N new S tier melee, rogue DK Ret? No. Ret dot Ret Ret is still sub optimal, subpar. DH remains probably busted. It's just leech is a little bit less. I don't even think leech is really what makes it what makes Demon Hunter crazy. They have all these little short rotatable defensive cooldowns. They still heal this they, they still get lay on hands from their demon pet too, so. Yeah. I don't know, man. Shadow Priest is <laughs> Ah, uh, bro, I, they they need to they, they need to make a follow up with PvP changes fast. They need they need to follow up with PvP changes fast. I think uh, what I was saying about arms is that if they at least gave us ignore pain, that would really help, and it will. But no D stance changes, and ignore pain is in exchange for a defensive utility that we already had. So ignore pain is better um, than that thing, but it's weird that we have to even make a decision about it. But arms, I mean, like so, so there's some more damage buffs in there too. So I think arms is going to be still really like an absolute shredder in terms of damage. Um, and we, like I think arms is overall a lot better because we're going to have like more consistent pressure, which will still really sting with ignore pain. And if we do get avatar reducing our damage taken by 10%, I mean, that's nice. They'll bring back ignore pain. It's going to be a talent, yeah. In theory, thanks so much, man. Big flex for you. Appreciate it, man. So these changes are like, I, I don't, like for some... I, I'm glad that, about what Warrior is looking like going into 10.0.5. I feel like another three weeks of this current balance is, like, bad for the game. And I think that moving into 10.0.5, they need to make some PvP adjustments. If they, if they need to... If they need to nerf... Um, if they need to nerf, like... Or, sorry, if, if Shadow Priests are bad in PvE, fine. But just, they need, they need to, like... To do some tuning. You know what I mean? There's no take fast just came out, where's that? We can take a look at that too. But yeah, this this kind of stuff is insane. That's kind of insane. So what is this stuff? It, 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 these are, are these all the changes that are coming for PTR? Yeah, we, we already looked at all this stuff. Yeah. Didn't we? 
Yeah, I, I think we already looked at some of this stuff. When, when is this coming out? Oh, baby. D-Stance. Now reduces damage done by 15%. Okay. Uh, but, but it still doesn't do anything for us defensively. We don't... <laughs> <sighs> Defensive stance now reduces damage done by 15, was 20. Developers notes, these stances adjusted in previous patches to address the damages that we no longer feel are present for warriors. We're increasing damage done in D stance to help them increase their offensive pressure without affecting them defensively. We don't need more offense. <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we, we can look at this separately because it does look like there's some different stuff in there. Holy shit. It's like we, it's like warriors are really struggling offensively. We wouldn't want to hurt their pressure on that note. We don't want to affect their offense. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's post let's post this here. This is the this is the PTR changes. We can take a look at the at the um at the prospective uh, class tuning uh, here in a second. But we'll 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 let that be the discussion for. Uh, 10.0.5 PTR, and then we'll look at the class tuning coming January 10th, which is in a like, couple days, so... Alright. We know that there's gotta be some tuning coming, especially with this kind of information, but the thing to look forward to for Arms Warriors are that, uh... That... Spiteful Serenity sounds awesome. Ignore Pain coming back sounds awesome, even if we have to give up Stormwall, which makes no sense. Um... And if we do get the 10% uh, reduced damage during Avatar, that's really awesome too. So Arms is looking good. It's looking well. It's looking better. Uh, still, got, still got a little ways to go, but some of the offensive stuff is cool. Ignore pain back is cool. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, let's look at the class tuning coming up soon, and hopefully we'll put some of this stuff in perspective. But we'll we'll let this be that and not have it be like an hour long video. All right, let's wrap it up here. Oh boy, what are they thinking, man? Let's find out.